Finally, let's talk a little bit about how you can stay safe online. The internet is a fantastic place. There's all sorts of really interesting stuff and tools and things you can do, but you can also get yourself into trouble. So let me offer a couple of tips that sort of come from my personal experience and sort of best practices online. Um, probably the most important thing I would say is use strong passwords. Um, what does that mean? So strong passwords are complicated, they're long, they consist of meaningless strings of numbers and digits, and they are never reused across sites. So if you, here's the problem, if you re reuse a password across sites and the weakest site that you use that password for is, com is compromised, you can be sure that attackers are gonna try that account and that password on all of those other sites and they're gonna use it to do things that you don't wanna do. So how do you actually do this? You might be thinking, how am I gonna remember all of these like random passwords? Well, I'll write them down and I'll pin it to my computer. No, terrible idea. Um, use a password manager. I like LastPass, there's other options out there, um, but password managers are great ways to generate strong passwords that are unique for every site and remember them without having to remember a bunch of meaningless strings of, of letters and numbers. A lot of us have a lot of different accounts today and so that's, that's kind of important. Uh, but try to use the strongest passwords you can for every account and make sure that you keep them distinct. Easiest way to do that, password manager. Second thing, install software updates. So the updates that you get from Microsoft or from Apple or from whoever maintains the software on your computer, those are important. A lot of times they're security related. They're updates that are patching security problems that the company has become aware of in their products. So don't put them off for months at a time because those updates are there to help you and help you stay secure. So that's an, another important piece of advice. Um, so another thing about, I think about internet security is think about what you do online. Um, you know, it's, it's maybe obvious to say it, but if you don't, if something isn't in digital form on some site, there's no way for someone to hack into that site and get it. For example, let's say that you have a potentially difficult conversation that you need to have with the person. Email, instant messenger, those may not be the best ways to have that conversation. You might want to ha try to have that conversation in person simply because it doesn't leave this digital record that either that person or somebody else could potentially capture and, and use against you someday. So, you know, particularly when you're talking about things that are sensitive or delicate, I would suggest you do those things in person. Talking about those things in person is frequently a lot more effective anyway, but you can also uh, avoid putting things online that you don't want other people to find. The same thing obviously goes true of social uh, networking sites like Facebook. I know that Facebook has a dizzying array of security tools and some of you guys probably have mastered those to a degree that I haven't. But when I post things on Facebook or, or when I interact with people on Facebook, I always come to it with this idea that anybody's gonna be able to see that. I know that I have these preferences that I can use on a particular post, but I may not get those right or I may forget who's in various groups or whatever. And so, you know, I think it's easiest to think of Facebook as a public medium. So you post something, just assume that everybody on Facebook is gonna be able to see that post. And if it's not something that you want everyone to see, maybe think about um, distributing that information in a little bit of a different way. Um, so you can find long lists of these things online. I think they sort of fall into the same types of categories. Oh, okay, uh, sorry. Uh, beware of links, particularly links in email. Let's say you get an email from your bank and it says you really need to, you know, uh, handle this issue otherwise your account's going to be comp you know, your account's going to be turned off. And then it gives you a link to click on. Okay, so there's one of two things you could do. You could click on that link, which is probably going to take you to a phishing site that's going to ask for all of your security questions, or you can go to your bank's website, log in the way you normally would, keep track of the HTTPS icon up there, make sure it looks right, type in the URL yourself, and then see if there's a message for you. Because look, if it's something that's that critical, not only are they gonna email you, but they're also gonna have some way of notifying you on the site. So, you know, in general, highly sensitive websites, whether it's mail or banking websites or shopping websites, you're really safest if you type those sites in by hand rather than ever relying on links that you get an email because those links could take you to a page that looks very similar and you, you, know, you might not be in a completely clear state of mind, whatever. Uh, the last thing is just use common sense. So if something 
smells wrong, if something seems wrong, if something doesn't look right, just don't do it. I mean, none of us are in possession of nuclear launch codes or similarly have similarly critical functions that we perform in our lives. If the worst thing that happens is the desperate friend that you suddenly have who's stuck in an airport who needs you to give them your credit card number so that they can get cash to go on their trip, if the worst thing that happens is they have to like spend the night in the airport or something, that's not really that bad. Unfortunately, I guess it depends on how much you like that friend. But if the alternative is your identity is compromised and you have to spend months repairing your credit history and you know dealing with all the charges on your cards and things like that, that's that's a much bigger problem. So, you know, before you do really dumb things online, ask yourself, does this seem right? So if I go to, you know, if my bank sends me an email and I click on it and suddenly they want the answers to all, to 30 security questions, including 25 that I've never entered on that site before, maybe something is wrong. So you combine a little common sense with strong passwords, making sure that you're good about software updates um, and thinking about links and just being aware of the type of content that you're putting onto the internet, you'll be fine.